How many ways could I rearrange the letters of the word Mississippi? We've seen an example like this before, where I give a bunch of letters and ask how many ways can you rearrange them. But previously, there wasn't repetitions in the letters. Suppose, for instance, that we had some rearrangement that had an S in the first letter. Because we have four different S's, it don't really care which of those four S's goes in the first location. I'm going to say that an a rearrangement is just some particular spelling where the letters are scrambled, but I don't care to keep track of which S goes where. I'll think that all of those are going to be the same. So here's how I can try to analyze a situation like this. There are, I think, 11 letters in this particular word. So what are we going to have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 letters that we have to fill in. Now, the way I'm going to think about slotting these in is I'm first going to decide where are all the S's going to go. We've got four of them, so let's pop the S's in first just for fun. How about I have an S, I'm just going to make it up maybe there, and there, and there, and there. And that's where my one, two, three, four S's are going to end up. And again, I don't care which order they come, all S's are indistinguishable. So the, the order in which my S's are put down doesn't matter, I'm just trying to figure out how many locations are there where S's could be. So if I want to think about the number of ways I could choose where the S's were supposed to go, there's 11 total spots, and I've chosen from the 11 spots, I've chosen four of them, and that's where my S's are going to go. And this symbol that we have, this 11 choose 4, was our shorthand for the computation that told us how many ways could I choose 4 items from 11. In this case, 4 spots to put my S's from my 11 possible spots. Alright, that was wonderful. So, so now I've chosen where the S's go, but I still have to figure out where the I's go, and where the P's go, and where the N goes. Let's do I next. It turns out we have one, two, three, four different I's. And so what I have remain is of those 11 slots, four of them have already been determined because I've determined the S's first. So 11 minus four leaves seven open spots. And among those seven open spots, I want to put in my four different I's. And again, I'm just gonna make up an example. How about I put an I here? How about I put an I here? How about I put an I there? And how about I put an I there? Again, just making up some way, but I'm slotting four I's into these seven spots. Or in other words, that for this step, that there are seven possible spots and that there were four I's that I could put them into. And so I'm going to multiply again by seven, choose four, and it's multiplication because these are independent events. How I choose my I's does not depend on my specific choices for for choosing my different S's. So this slot was for choosing my I's. I'll just be, be brief and say that's for my choosing my I's. All right, moving right along. Next up, I'm going to say that I want to choose, we've done S and the I's. Oh, how about we do P's? I've got two different P's here, and I've got four remaining spots. So what I'm going to do is that from those four remaining spots, I'm going to choose, now there's only two P's, so I'm choosing two from that. And that this multiplication here is going to be representing how I put my P's in. And again, I can make up where I actually choose to put them, how I put my P there and my, my P there, it doesn't really matter. But what's left is just a single M, I haven't put that there, and it has to come right down here, there's only one remaining spot for it. Or if you want to think about it, there is one possible spot and there is one possible thing I want to fill it with, so it's one choose one, which, by the way, you could do the arithmetic is just equal to one, and so that final spot was how I put in the M. So, effectively what I've done here is a multiplication of a bunch of choosing. I've managed to fill this all out by multiplying four times the four different events of choosing where the S's go, choosing where the I's go, choosing where the P's go, and finally putting that last M in. So, any situation that has repetitions, 
where we, we, we don't distinguish between these repeated things, is a perfect example of when we don't care about order and where we might try to use this technique of using a bunch of choose operations opposed to picking operations. And here indeed that this scrambling with multiple different repeats ends up being just the multiplication of four different ways that I can choose the S's and I can choose the I's, choose the P's and choose the M's and where each of those letters are going to be going among this 11 total initial spots. And then if we really wanted to, we knew that this choose notation was shorthand for a longer formula with a bunch of factorials. And so why don't I just come in and fill out what that's going to be. 11 choose 4 was 11 factorial divided by 4 factorial and then also divided by 11 minus 4 factorial. 11 minus 4 is 7, so 7 factorial. That was going to be the first term. Don't be confused, by the way, that the round brackets, they, they, there is no line here dividing them. Uh, it, people sometimes get confused and think they're fractions. This notation is not meant to be a fraction, it's just its own special notation. Two numbers on top of each other with a bracket. Anyways, moving on. Then if I want to take 7 choose 4, so this was 7 factorial on the top, truly divided when I use this formula, divided by 4 factorial, and 7 minus 4 is 3 factorial on the bottom. And then I'm going to be multiplying by 4 factorial divided by 2 factorial and 2 times, two, 4 minus 2 is 2 factorial. And one more factor here. This is going to be 1 factorial over 1 factorial divided by 1 minus 1, which is 0 factorial, which is a really long and complicated way of saying 1. All of this final expression is just equal to 1. And then if we really wanted to, we could multiply out all these factorials and we could get out our final answer.